Welcome to Vedial Vagaparai. In this video, we are going to see about hyperconjugation. So there is a neat question. I read the question. A tertiary butyl carbocation is more stable than a secondary butyl carbocation because of which of the following? And uh, we see very clearly there are four options that are given here. Two of them are about R effect, which is nothing but resonance effect. One is I effect, which is inductive effect. And the fourth option is hyperconjugation. So our topic of discussion here now is hyperconjugation. In the sense, the answer is actually hyperconjugation. The, the butyl carbocations are actually having another effect, which is called as uh, inductive plus I effect, electron donating inductive effect. Uh, but that option is not given here. So uh, all the other three options are not possible in case of uh, tertiary butyl carbocation. So the answer is hyperconjugation. But then you must know what is hyperconjugation and how uh, uh, the carbocation stability is arranged is with respect to hyperconjugation. So let's see the definition of hyperconjugation. So hyperconjugation is defined as uh, sigma pi conjugation in the sense it is an electron delocalization from the sigma bonded electrons to the pi bonded electrons okay or in other words from an sp3 hybrid orbital the electrons are delocalized to a vacant p orbital on the carbocation so it could be a carbocation or a radical or a pi electron system so uh, there must be at least one alpha carbon so let me draw the structure of uh, ethyl group so uh, the molecule that is shown here is ethyl group so uh, let me draw the structure of ethyl carbocation which is actually a primary carbocation so i suppose you all know what is primary secondary and tertiary carbocations you can look at it in other videos okay so we are talking about this particular molecule, which is at this molecule and this that is represent here, both are same. Okay. So in this particular molecule, what we see is uh, there, there is this carbocation, which is actually sp2 hybridized carbon. And this methyl carbon is sp3 hybridized. So these carbon hydrogen bonds are all sp3 hybrid bonds whereas uh, the p orbital of the carbocation is vacant and so it has a capacity to accommodate electron so in case of hyperconjugation which is also called as baker nathan effect the electrons are delocalized from this sp3 hybrid orbital to the sp2 hybrid orbitals but then it is also called as no bond resonance hyperconjugation is also called as no bond resonance in the sense um, in in case of your normal resonance we will be able to draw the electron delocalization say for example uh, this is a conjugated system and in this conjugated system we show resonance by actually migration of the pi electrons from one atom or bond or uh, from an atom to a bond or from a bond to an atom or from a bond to another bond. This is how we show resonance in case of um, uh, resonance system, conjugation in case of a resonance system. Uh, but then when we are talking about hyperconjugation, we do not see a solid migration of the bonded electrons to the neighboring electrons. But these electrons are actually getting delocalized. So it is a highly imaginary situation and this is possible when it is possible only when there is a alpha hydrogen group or a lone pair on an atom adjacent to the sp2 carbon atoms. So when you are having a carbonyl carbon sorry when you are having a carbocation or a radical or a pi electron system the neighboring carbon this particular carbon is called as the alpha carbon and this alpha carbon must have hydrogen if there is a hydrogen in this alpha carbon then it can definitely show hyperconjugation hyperconjugation exists in that particular molecule so we see all these examples 
okay alkenes alkyl carbocations alkyl free radicals nitro compounds with alpha hydrogen atoms all of them will show hyperconjugation so what will not show hyperconjugation carbon ions that is carbon bearing negative charge do not exhibit hyperconjugation so you'll be wondering why cannot carbon ion exhibit hyperconjugation so you see here in case of carbon ion the p orbital will have a pair of electrons unlike a carbocation where there is a vacancy here in case of a carbon ion there will be a pair of electrons here and so there is no possibility for delocalization to happen from a hybrid sp3 orbital to the p orbital electrons that is why carbon ions do not show hyperconjugation so now quickly we will see how uh, hyperconjugation can be represented uh, or how many different types of structures can be drawn for hyperconjugation again we are taking the example of the ethyl carbocation so in case of an ethyl carbocation what we notice here is this particular hydrogen okay the hydrogen carbon bond this hybrid bond has a pair of electrons so this pair of electrons are now shifted to this particular vacant p orbital so this behavior is possible in all of the other hydrogen atoms that is why hydrogen 2 hydrogen 3 are also shown so this is how conjugation happens and this can be seen in every hydrogen that is on the alpha carbon so all alpha hydrogens will show hyperconjugation has the ability to be delocalized from their carbon hydrogen bond to the neighboring not the hydrogen it is the electron pair that is involved in bonding so i will show you how the hydrogen is not moving so in this particular representation it is very easy for us to visualize how the pair of electrons are shifted between the two carbon atoms but the hydrogen is not moving anywhere the hydrogen is still there at that place so the structure remains the same but it appears as though the hydrogen has left so th that is the reason why this is called as no bond resonance so similarly you can also see another conjugation that can happen from the second hydrogen atom and uh, the first bonding back again so this is a very cyclic system where uh, when the second replaces into its original position the third can switch in other words all the three hydrogen atoms which is there on the methyl carbon can involve in hyperconjugation in other words we can say there are how many 1 2 3 possible hyperconjugation representation resonance structures and because methyl group can involve in so many different kind of resonance structures this particular carbocation which is there in the methyl group gets stabilized so next what we will see is about isopropyl carbocation again in case of isopropyl carbocation we see so this is the carbocation so you have an alpha carbon on this side you have also another alpha carbon on the other side it means that all together there are six hydrogen atoms which can involve in hyperconjugation so both the sides the protons can involve in hyperconjugation and that is what we are seeing here so the first set is the three due to the three proton of the methyl group on the left hand side which you see here and the second set is due to the three protons on the right hand side so that is how we see all together you have six different structures uh, for this particular molecule so more the number of hyperconjugated structure more stable the compound so when compared to ethyl carbocation the isopropyl carbocation will be more stable now going to our tertiary butyl carbocation so in our tertiary butyl carbocation you see there is three alpha carbons and each of them are having three protons so by now you have would have guessed what would have happened so it has altogether 3 into 3 9 
carbon hydrogen sigma bonds which can involve in hyperconjugation or in other words nine different ways the hyperconjugative structures could be done and uh, this is a simple explanation of what we have already seen so as a recap let us remind ourselves so what is hyperconjugation it is a no bond resonance it is a sigma pi conjugation so it is a bonding between the sigma orbital and the p orbital or the orbital which is involved in sideways overlap okay so that is hyperconjugation and hyperconjugation in case of tertiary butyl carbocation is actually due to nine different kinds of molecule sorry nine different protons and as a result it you will have nine different structures in other words tertiary carbocation is more stable than isopropyl which is more stable than ethyl so now going back to our question so in the beginning itself i told you the answer is hyperconjugation but then uh, let us review these molecules i intentionally did not discuss secondary butyl carbocation so we discussed tertiary butyl carbocation now coming to the secondary butyl carbocation we see here there is an alpha carbon on this side and an alpha sorry another alpha carbon on the right side so there are two sets and here you have three and here you have two so altogether 3 plus 2 five different structures hyperconjugated structures resonance structures are possible for the secondary butyl but then in case of tertiary butyl you have nine different structures because you are having nine protons on the alpha carbon atoms so you have three sets and so you get nine structures so in every way as stated in this question tertiary butyl carbocation is more stable than secondary butyl carbocation so you know now it is stable but why because of hyperconjugation and also what is not mentioned here as i told you before itself the plus i effect so alkyl groups exert plus i effect in case of a tertiary butyl you are having three methyl groups which exert plus i effect when case of secondary butyl you see this side you have one methyl group and this side you have an ethyl group and as a result here again because of plus i effect also the tertiary butyl is more stable than the secondary butyl carbocation this is how we discuss electronic effects and we compare the relative stability of different molecules for further uh, information on resonance effect we will see in the next slide next uh, video thank you